How's it going everybody? You're watching the Nabal Tech and today I'm going to show you one of the most important videos of iOS 16 because today I'm going to show you what settings you need to change right now after updating to iOS 16. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first one has to do with the battery status right here at the top. We all know that iOS 16 reintroduced the battery status, the percentage of your battery right here at the battery indicator, but it doesn't come turn on by default. So if you want to turn on, go to settings, then scroll down until you see battery and right here, battery percentage, you turn it on and there you have it. You have your battery percentage. Now, some iPhones are still not compatible with this feature like the iPhone 12 mini, 13 mini, 10R and the iPhone 11. But thankfully, in iOS 16.1, so the next version of iOS 16, we will have this feature for all devices. So the 12 mini, 13 mini, 10R and 11 will get this feature as well. Another change in iOS 16 has to do with notifications in the lock screen. A lot of people didn't really like the fact that now, by default, they're kind of hidden right here at the bottom, at the bottom portion of your lock screen. But the thing is, you can change it and you can make it look pretty much like in iOS 15. There's a ton of customization. Let me show you. So if you go to settings and then if you go to notifications, as you can see, we have three different models. So we have count, stack and list. And let me show you. So count is extremely minimalist. So then it will just show you a number of how many notifications you have right there, as you can see here, at the bottom of your lock screen. So it'll say, for example, you have seven notifications and then it'll just show you a number seven and very, very minimalist. You have also the possibility of stack, which is kind of the default way of seeing notifications in iOS 16. So then it'll create this stack of notifications right here at the bottom of your lock screen. And then you have list, which looks much, much more like iOS 15. So then you have a full list of your notifications taking up a good portion of your lock screen. So this is a very, very important setting that you can change right now, right after updating to iOS 16. So then you can see your notifications the best way for you. Now let's talk about Spotlight Search, which as you know, has this new interface, this new button right here in iOS 16. So then you can use your Spotlight Search by pulling down anywhere on your home screen like you used to do on any page, right? Or you can tap here and do the exact same thing. And the thing is, not a lot of people are liking this, this search button right here, just because uh, sometimes they miss and tap on it unintentionally. And you pretty much already have this possibility. So tapping here isn't necessarily a good thing. So if you want to disable the spotlight search button right here, you can simply go to settings and then scroll down a little bit until you see home screen. And as you can see, we have this search section right here and you can disable that if you want to. And as you come back, search is gone. So you can still use the spotlight search by pulling down anywhere as I showed you before, but you're not gonna be able to use it from here, which honestly, for me, I prefer it that way because I can use it much better to slide through and cycle through my pages. I just think it's much better, much cleaner this way. Now let's talk about duplicates. So we actually have duplicates on two different apps in iOS 16. So we have on photos and on contacts as well. So let me show you on both. As you tap on photos and then you tap on your albums and then you scroll down and you keep scrolling, keep scrolling, you see here duplicates. As you tap on that, you see all of your duplicate photos and then you can easily delete all of your duplicates by tapping on select and then you can easily select all and then you can choose to merge so then it'll just be one or you can delete so if you tap on merge it'll just create one photo so it'll delete the duplicate and it'll just be one single photo that's what i recommend you to do right but of course you can also delete so then it'll delete both so it'll delete uh, the normal photo and the duplicate so keep in mind and check exactly what you want to do okay i'm going to cancel that and I'm gonna also show you on the contacts, how it works. So open up your phone and then tap here on contacts 
And as you can see right here, right there, it's gonna show me that I have 1,010 duplicates found. And that's because I've used an app in the past that ended up duplicating my contacts list. And I never actually had the, the energy to go ahead and fix this, but now in iOS 16, it's right here. So you can, I can simply tap on view duplicates. And then as you can see, it'll just find everything and I can have the same feature. So if I tap on merge all, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna delete the duplicate and keep the original. So the possibility here is to merge. So just like on my photos, I can tap on merge and then it'll do the exact same thing. Merge is the option if you wanna delete the duplicate and keep the original. Another iOS 16 feature that I do recommend that you check out and change right now, you can actually choose if you wanna leave it on or off, has to do with your keyboard, which is the keyboard feedback haptics. So the fact that when you tap on a key on your keyboard, on every single key of your keyboard, it'll give you that haptic feedback, the little vibration. So it's a very cool little feature that's new in iOS 16, but comes turned off by default. So if you wanna turn it on or just test it out for yourself, go to settings and then scroll down until you see sounds and haptics, and then scroll down a little bit more and you see keyboard feedback. As you tap on that, you have now the haptic option. So you can either leave it only with sound, so as you tap on the keys, it'll give that clicking sound, or haptic. So then, if you leave it on like mine is, as I said, every single time I tap on the key, it'll give the little vibration coming from the Taptic engine in the iPhone. This is really cool, and you don't necessarily need to leave it on, but I do recommend that you test it out, turn it on, see if, it, if it's good for you, if you like it, or maybe you can turn it back off. And coming back here to the sounds and haptics section of the settings, if you scroll down a little bit, you have now a new option which says ring silent mode switch. And take a look at this because this is really cool and people asked for this for ages and now we have this possibility here in iOS because of iOS 16. So you can choose if you wanna have haptics in ring mode or in silent mode. So you can choose that individually. So you can choose to play haptic, so for the iPhone to vibrate when your iPhone is in ring mode, so when it's ringing, when it's loud, and you can choose the same thing if you want, to, if you want vibration when it's in silent mode. So for example, you can choose to have haptics to have vibration when it's in loud mode, but maybe you don't want it to vibrate when it's in silent mode. So then you have your iPhone completely silent, not making sound, it's gonna be silent and not vibrating either. So then you can change that individually right here, as you can see. So then you can choose sound and vibration, just vibration, just sound or nothing. Another setting that I do recommend that you check out right now is still here in the settings. So if you scroll down and keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling until you see notes, as you tap on notes right here, you see password, this section here, password. Tap there and you see that you have two possibilities of using your password to lock your notes. So then you can use your device passcode. So then if you lock your note to unlock it, you will use the exact same password that you use to unlock your iPhone. So this one, the lock screen passcode, this password, this passcode right here, or you can use a custom password as well. So if you wanna use a specific password for your notes, you can choose that as well. And of course, you can set up Face ID or Touch ID as your biometrics to unlock your notes. So this is very, very cool because a lot of people have had problems with forgetting the specific notes password. Now that's over because if you want to, you can use the same device passcode that you use to unlock your iPhone to also unlock your locked notes. Still here in the iPhone settings, if we scroll down until we see Siri and search, we have this new feature in iOS 16 called Call Hang Up. And if you have Hey Siri turned on, which most people have, and it's so annoying because of this. So if you have this feature turned on, it means that now in iOS 16, you have the possibility to hang up a call by saying, Hey Siri, hang up this call. So then you have this possibility of using this command to hang up a call using Siri, so hands free. So this is a new feature, you can check it out, you can enable it or disable it, it's up to you, but honestly for me, I generally don't even have Hey Siri turned on. 
I have this completely off, but it's up to you. Check it out. If that's important to you, if this hands-free see reuse is important, you can check it out and use or not this new feature. Another new setting in iOS 16 has to do with the side button. Let me show you. If we scroll down and tap on accessibility and then you tap on touch, if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see prevent lock to end call. And this is a feature that I do recommend that it turn on, as you can see, because what this will do is while you are on a phone call, if you press on the side button, it won't end the call anymore. So this button will be inactive, let's say, to end the call while you are on a phone call. And I do recommend that you turn it on unless you really use it, unless you really like to press this button to end the call. I do recommend that you use it because this happens so many times that you accidentally end a call, you accidentally hang up, and then it looks really embarrassing, like hanging up a phone call. Sometimes it's it's a mess. So I do recommend that you turn this on so then you'll never have to worry about ending a phone call and hanging up by accidentally pressing the side button. Now, back to the home screen, let's open up the weather and let me show you a setting that I do recommend that it turn on immediately. So, if you tap here on the menu button to show you all of your cities and locations, and then at the top right hand corner on the three dots, tap then on notifications and you see right here this new section called current location. And then you can enable severe weather notifications and next hour precipitation. So this is very, very cool, especially if you live in an area where you do have severe weather or that you have very, very strong and important rains. So this could be very, very important to you. Of course, it'll use a little bit more of your battery because it's gonna look for those warnings, but this is an important thing. I do recommend that you turn it on. Now, back to the settings. If we scroll down until we find mail, and then we scroll all the way down to the last option, which is called sending, if you tap there, you see that you have four different possibilities for the undo send delay. This is a new feature in iOS 16 as well, and I do recommend that you check this setting right here because if you wanna use the, the new feature where you have the possibility to undo your send, so to cancel a sent mail, so it pretty much means that if you're composing a new mail and you tap on send, you have the possibility to undo it, to cancel it. And then right here you can choose the delay. So of course you can turn off this feature, which I don't see why anyone would do it, but of course you have to you can choose this delay to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds. So the more you have here, the more time you have here, it means that you have more time to actually cancel that sent email. So if you want to use this feature, I do rec recommend that you change this setting to 30 seconds so then you have more time to undo your sent mail. And last but not least, if we head back to settings for the last time and we scroll down until we find privacy and security and we scroll down as well quite a bit until we see app privacy report, I do recommend that you turn on your app privacy report. As you can see, by default, it's turned off. So then as you turn it on, you see a bunch of data, a bunch of information on how your data in your privacy are being used or being bridged by apps individually, one by one. So turn it on and then every once in a while, check your privacy reports because maybe you'll be surprised, okay? So that's it, that's literally it. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for watching and checking the most important settings that you need to change and take a look right now after updating to iOS 16. Thanks for watching. I really hope you appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one as usual. Bye-bye.